To quickly configure Loop Editor to get it to work with your hardware and the way you want it to work, we'll take a look at the Preferences menu first. Go to Loop Editor, choose Preferences, and we've got Commands, Schemes, and Output. Commands will help you bind key commands to common things, so if you find you're doing something a lot, like setting a loop region, adding a slice, and you want it to be a different key combination than it already is, this is where you can save that. For schemes, this is how Loop Editor is going to handle exporting split stereo file names. So in this case, if we were to pick this scheme, for example, we would get the name of the file, which is right now abstract beat rhythm, a dash, abbreviation standing for left or right, so left channel, L dot extension, the file extension, which will change depending on which one we choose. So if we were going to stick with a split stereo wave file, we would get abstract beat rhythm dash L dot wave and abstract beat rhythm dash R dot wave. And that's how the schemes work. You can make your own or you can use one of the ones that they have there. Output will let you pick your channel one and channel two outputs from your audio device. So right now I'm using this Apogee one and I've got channel one configured to one and two configured to two. Now, in addition to that menu, we can also set up a few things over here. We've got a master volume knob, which after you've adjusted, if you need to reset back to zero, you can. Our play button, which is in the toolbar here. We also have this popover window. Now this popover window will enable you to choose where your playback is going to start from, whether or not there's an autoplay on the loop when you click on it. And then this drop down menu chooses some different ways that you can warp and change the loop. So we can leave it on none, but when you pick factor per percentage wise or tempo or sense or intervals, you have the option to click preserve the pitch as you change the loop. So this particular loop has some pitch elements. Now, if I don't preserve the pitch when I speed it up, you're gonna hear the pitch of the bass drum notes, especially go up. So everything's going up in pitch, unless I choose preserve pitch, in which case it uses the slices to change the tempo while maintaining the pitch. And you can imagine that the rest of the things you can change as well, all also will preserve the pitch or speed depending on what it is you're changing. So we can change the pitch while still preserving the speed. We can do it backwards. Of course, the more you deviate away from center, the more chance you have that you're going to have some audio artifacts in there. So that's something to think about as well. So this is before you even get it into your DAW, which is going to do that pitch stretching and time stretching probably on its own. It's just nice to hear what's possible with the loop you're working on and set it up to work the way you want to. Now you can do a little bit of configuration of the interface and what we're seeing as well. We'll take a look at that next. 